Acquiring professional certificates can be quite time consuming. It can take quite a lot of effort to get them. So today in this video, I want to inquire the question, what the most important certificates for business professionals really are. So welcome to another coffee break here on my channel from learning. My name is Heinrich. I'm a former McKinsey consultant and on my channel I talked about how to become successful in the first years of your career. So this video is informed by my six years in consulting, having seen lots of companies in that time. And I also asked you on Instagram to get your opinion what the most important certificates are and why. So all of this has been gone into this video. But to get some clarity on what it is that I'm talking about, let's mention four areas that I will not cover in this video. And the first First are very regular university degrees, something like a bachelor, a master, an MBA. This is not what I will talk about. This is not what I'm considering a certificate. Same is true for professional certifications that you just need to work on a specific job. This, for instance, is a bar exam in law. I'm also not including a CPA or an ACCA or any other accounting certification like that. Next, I will not consider certifications that are very specific to IT. So SAP certifications, certifications from Google, and finally, I will also not not include certifications that are very specific to just one sub area of business, something like a CPIM in supply chain or a CMA in accounting. And again, exception will be those that are more broadly recognized and applicable. All that being said, let's jump here into our tier list. Here with the S tier being the highest tier and the D tier being the lowest tier here in the rank that we are going to do. And now let's start with certifications from platforms like Udacity or Coursera and so on. And those for me are platforms where you do get a certificate for a structured online course and there are some type of examination logic in the end where not everyone necessarily gets a certificate that goes over the curriculum. And I'm placing these types of certificates in the C tier. And my rationale here is that yes, Often you learn quite a lot of things. It can be really helpful. I also myself once took a Udacity course and I did learn a lot of things from that. Though the truth is I would still argue that these types of courses are not that respected by employers. There's not really the perception behind it that you have such a certificate, you're really an expert in this field, you really accomplish something significant if you pass. So yes, you will learn good things, but no, I do not think that this will make a huge impact on your career. Next, let's talk about Scrum Master certifications. And for the uninitiated, the Scrum Master is a role in the agile methodology, often used for instance in modern software development. I place this in the C tier for the reasons that on the one hand side, this is I think a skill that is not that narrow. I think you can apply agile methodologies in many different areas in business, not only for instance in software development. And I do think that this whole trend towards moving to agile is very valuable and many businesses cherish this and value this. And especially this idea of being a scrum master is something with some positive connotation tied to it. There are several quite renowned institutions where you can do a scrum master certification as long as you pick one of them. I don't think you'll make huge steps in your career only because of that. But I think it is very much worth checking it out. Quite similar to the Scrum Master, I see the Six Sigma Belt certifications. So this is a principle often applied in production. It is about process quality, it is about continuous improvement. And this is something that I think many people know, many people know about. It's a system where you start with a white belt and then it can advance up to a black belt. I think the last one is a master belt. It is something that many people know. I think the Six Sigma principles are very well applicable in many different types of business outside of production as well. And people will respect it if you say that you are a Six Sigma black belt. Next, let's talk about language certifications like the TOEFL, like the IELTS test the certifications where you prove that your language abilities meet a certain level. And these types of certifications actually often require to get, for instance, into master degrees, also into MBA programs. The reason why I put them into the D tier is not that they are worthless. Surely can help to prove we are one of these certifications. And then of course you would like to have a nice high score to make a good use of it. It's nice to use this to prove that your English skills are really meeting very high standards. But the truth is also, especially for these high paced career roads in IB, in consulting, if you apply to a firm like McKinsey, BCG, Bain, people will just assume that you have very good English skills. It's not really something where people will test you for. Some consulting firms do decide to have just an English component in one of the interviews where they just converse with you in English to see whether you're up to the level. But if you pass this, usually you will get the checkbox and then it doesn't really matter how high exactly your TOEFL score was in the end. 
Next, let's talk about the PMP, the Project Management Professional Certification. This is a certification where you prove that you have project management skills, that you can lead teams, understand what stakeholder management is all about, master the common project management skills and abilities. And this is one where I'd say this is very well known, well respected. People will know usually what this is. And then on the other hand, there's also the fact that in almost all modern business roles, there will be some type of project management expected from you. This is surely true in consulting, but also if you work in industry, project management is just part of almost every modern business role, which is, I believe it is just very important, very relevant, and also quite well respected. So this should justify the A tier for the PMP certification. And now let's talk about another certification that I would place in the A tier, and this is the case score, the candidate select score. And candidate select is actually the sponsor of today's video. So what are they solving? Put yourself into the shoes of a student, you study at one of the prestigious target business schools, and maybe your score in the top 10% of your cohort at this prestigious target business school. But are you now just in general in the top 10% of business students? Well, likely not, likely you're much better, right? Like your percentile will be much higher because of course there's already a pre-selection of students attending this specific target business school. It wouldn't be fair to compare yourself to another person, the top 10% of maybe a non-target business school. And these are exactly the considerations that CASE wants to solve with their certification program. Because CASE is the provider of a fair and objective evaluation of university degrees, both for students and also for employers. And they do this by collecting lots of great distributions from many, many universities and degrees and combine this with over 400,000 data points of IQ tests and personality tests to algorithmically put all the grades in the right context. So with CASE you can get a certificate as the proof of your actual academic performance above and beyond just the absolute grade. And the truth is that many companies, including Boston Consulting Group, Kearney, Airbus, ThyssenKrupp, among many others, they respect the certification, actually encourage applicants to apply with this certification to the job. The case certificate is currently offered for eight different countries. This includes Germany, China, India, Italy, Portugal, Spain, UK, and USA. So if you're interested for the certificate, case provided a link for the From Learning community where you can actually get the basic version of this certificate completely for free. Just exit it via the link in the video description. The free version already gives you a basic understanding where you fall into the adjusted grade distribution and some basic statistics around that. And if you want even more insights, this is your opportunity to get a premium certificate for a small additional sum. Next, let's talk about certificates from online learning platforms like Udemy or Skillshare. I personally like these platforms quite a lot. I also personally took many courses on these platforms and I'm actually also offering some of my basic courses on these platforms as well. The reason why I put them here in the D tier is that actually I think while you might learn a lot of things, it's not really respected in the employer market. And the reason is that often these certificates do not really have proper examination structures. And this for me is the difference comparing these certificates to certificates from platforms like Udacity or Coursera, where there are proper exams in the end. These types of examinations just do not happen for these types of online degrees, which is why employers cannot really trust that you have the skills. And of course, the quality of these courses can also differ quite a lot depending on the instructor that you follow, which is why I think the detail is justified. Next, let's talk about the CFI and specifically the FMVA certification, which is the Financial Modeling and Valuation Certification. And yes, this is a quite industry-specific, function-specific certificate. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that because I think that many people actually know it. Also, just beyond the world of finance, it just shows that you have analytical skills. It shows that you are good in Excel, good in modeling, good in data analysis, which is why I think that this is actually something worth mentioning. And many people also from the community on Instagram told me that yes, they know about the certification and they felt that it really helped them 
in the application process, which is why I included it here in the B tier. Let's now talk about certifications from business schools. These are certifications that are recently in the last one or two years also see lots of ads on. Business schools seem to promote these certificates quite extensively. You can do certificates on all types of different topics, general management, finance, blockchain, crypto, sustainability, and so on. And often there are quite renowned universities behind it, offering them and then in a couple of weeks for a couple of thousand euros or dollars that you need to pay, you will get this certificate. And let's now start talking about certificates that are offered by non-target schools. So proper universities, but not really target schools. And frankly, here I think these types of certificates are not that different from certificates from platforms like Udacity, Coursera. The universities are not that renowned. Yes, it would likely be solid content because it comes from an established university. Often there's also some type of examination structure in the end, which is why I decided to put them here in the same tier, here in the C tier. And let's contrast that from exactly these certificates that are now offered from target business schools. So certificates may be offered by Harvard Business School, by Stanford, by Wharton, any of these other very renowned business schools. I think content-wise, maybe they're a little bit better, maybe not, who knows, right? Probably depends on the specific degree. Of course, now you have the advantage of having this reputation, this big brand name on your CV, which maybe makes your CV sparkle a little bit more. Frankly, though, I think that there's a very significant difference comparing such a certificate that you maybe make at Harvard, comparing it to a proper bachelor degree at Harvard, to a proper MBA at Harvard. How this will be perceived is just very, very different. And the main reason is that everyone will know that you just paid yourself into it. Usually it's really not difficult to get into these certificates. You just need to pay a couple of thousand bucks and then you can do it. You can write the exams in the end. It's not really considered to be a big achievement to have done that. You might learn some good and interesting things and yes, it might give a little bit of a plus in the CV, but don't expect that only because you do that, this will really move your career forward in a significant way. That's at least my humble opinion. Let me know in the comments if you made any other experiences on that. Next, let's talk about the GMAT, the Graduate Management Ability Test. And this might be a little bit of a controversial choice, but I do think it's justified to put the GMAT in the A tier. And maybe first for the uninitiated, the GMAT stands for General Management Admission Test. It's an entry exam that is required for many advanced business degrees, including almost all renowned MBAs. And it consists of different sections, integrated reasoning, where you need to make sense of information that is presented to you, quantitative skills, where you need to do quant exercises, and also verbal logic exercises that you need to do. So first of all, I did the GMAT as well. When preparing for the GMAT for my MBAs, actually I did learn a couple of things. I would argue that my quant skills did improve quite a bit just by preparing for the GMAT in a structured way. I actually made a video in the past about my GMAT journey. I will link it somewhere above here. Check it out if you're interested on that. But I do think that a strong GMAT score, and of course the value of the GMAT will be very much determined by the score, is a very strong indicator towards employers. And I do think it can help you to get the job, get that interview invitation. And it's no secret that many consulting firms are actually asking in their application forms for your GMAT score. If you took one, they will want to know what your score was. But of course, don't make yourself illusions here. If you have a score that is below 650, for instance, as a GMAT, just to provide a couple of ballpark numbers, this will likely more hurt you than help you. And then probably from 650 to 700, that's like, you know, it's like not really good, not really that strong, nothing that will really help you to necessarily get invited. If you score 700 or higher, this I'd say usually will be considered a good score, a solid score, where it will definitely not hurt you, potentially they will also really show your analytical abilities, your intellectual aptitude, but I'd say to really impress someone, to really impress someone with your GMAT score, you need a score of 740, 750 ideally, or even higher. And then this will put you in the top 1%, top 2%, top 3%, of the test takers. This is where you can really impress people with. And if you do score above the 700s, then I would argue for many, many positions, this will help you quite a lot. Now let's talk about the one certification that I would put into the S tier. And this is the CFA, the Chartered Financial Analyst. And yes, this is a certification that is of course based on one industry, on one function, and the finance function. 
And it is also true that actually you can only hold this certification in the end if you work for, I believe, in four years or so in this area of business. Before that, you will not even get it. But I would argue you don't even need to have the full final CFA in the end. Just the fact that you completed a CFA level one, for instance, or level two or level three. So there are three levels of exams. You don't need to take level one, level two, and level three. And then, at least this is, I believe, how it works. If you have level three and also meet these other requirements, like having a certain amount of work experience, you will get the title. If you just have the first levels, this already shows that you have very good finance skills, very good analytical quantitative skills. And the truth is almost everyone in the business community knows the CFA, just a very well respected certification. Frankly, if I look also at my former colleagues at McKinsey, what certifications they did, frankly, none of them had a PMP, at least as far as I'm aware, almost none of them worked maybe with a Scrum Master or a Six Sigma belt, besides maybe the people really working in the specialized practice in this area. But if you would look at the CVs of these people, quite a few of them had actually CFAs completed or at least the first levels. This is very common. The truth is also that the passing rates, actually the failure rates of these CFA levels are quite high. For these certifications, about 50%, 5-0, I believe, for the first level, even up to 60%, 6-0 of the people fail, just showing that there is a certain rigor behind it that not everyone gets that you really need to prove your worth, show what you are able to do. But now all that being said, do I think that you really need these certifications to succeed in business to advance your career? Of course, it's difficult to give black and white answers on that. It might also depend on the environment, the company that you apply for. But I'd argue, especially if you apply for consulting roles, also for investment banking, so these, let's say, traditional high-paced careers, actually these certifications are not really needed. I can promise you, you will not get hired because you have these fancy certifications on your resume. If at all, if you have a very high GMAT or maybe a strong CFA, of course, this can help. This can underline your analytical aptitude, but I've never in my whole life overheard any people say, oh, this person, this guy, this lady, such a strong person, just to look at his or her impressive certifications. This is just not how it works. So take all of this with a grain of salt. Of course, also this ranking. It's not a science, just my personal judgment. Let me know in the comments what your perspective on that is. Very open to engage in a conversation with you. What I think is a nice little offering is the case score certificate that I talked about, the firm that is actually also sponsoring this video. Once again, you can download your personal case certificate in the most basic version for free. Check out the link in the video description to get access to that. It is quite respected by several employers and available in many countries. So as always, if you took any value out of this video at all, destroy the like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Big, big thanks to all the members of this channel. Much appreciated. My name is Heinrich. You find weekly videos here on my channel. See you again next week. Until then, all the best to you and bye-bye.